Hello and welcome. I'm Lauren. And I'm Lena. And this is Pass, Pass Me, Me the, the Booze. Booze, a paranormal podcast where we discuss the history and hauntings of local and not so local places while partaking in adult booverages. In each episode, we share a different haunted place and pair it with a drink. This week, Roanoke. Roanoke. <laughs> We're good at this. Yay. <laughs> All right. So, what did you pick up for us? Um, so as we get into the story, you'll understand why we tried to find this wine. Um, it's called the White Doe wine, um, but it seems to be exclusive to Virginia, or just, I just I just couldn't find it here in Pennsylvania, so. Yeah, I had looked out by me, too, on the way to this area, mm-hmm. and no luck. Yes, because the White Doe is based on... Uh, a person in our story today, mm-hmm. but I I found a replacement. I've never had it before, but it is a white wine still, and instead of a doe, it's a goat. It, I feel like that's very <laughs> on brand, though. Oh, and it's a it's, it's a called it's called goat, goat wine, wine. <laughs> and it's from New York. <laughs> cool. So this is a with enticing flavors of apple and pear, goat white. Has a fruity nose, crisp flavor, and a soft, balanced finish. This is sensational, unique, and easy drinking. Enjoy with grilled seafood, poultry dishes, or salads. Oh, I would love some salmon right now. Oh, man. I love salmon. Same. The bottle is really unique looking. I will say that. Like, <laughs> it's got a cool little goat on his tongue sticking out. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> this is also the thing of nightmares. <laughs> I want to let everyone know he that right now. He is a little now. scary, but I think he's cute. <laughs> yes. Okay, so it's a semi-dry mm-hmm. table wine. Yes. We don't have any food with it, though, so. No, but see you could it. pair it with seafood, <laughs> poultry dishes, or salads. We'll see how it tastes on its own. I feel like that's what we do. With... No, no, see, you, you use the... the... Help. Yeah. So the, this open. part of the oh. wine cork. It's teaching me how to open wine properly. Oh, yours is even fancier than mine. If you spin, mm-hmm. it should cut. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, it did. That's like magic. It is like magic when we use tools. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Do you want to do this part? Okay. Into the cork we go. I'm going to make this as sexual as possible. <laughs> oh, yeah. Really got to screw it in. Harder. I'm, deeper. I'm trying. Okay. <laughs> Faster. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gone to the gym in a while, okay? I mean, I don't go to the gym, period. My workouts are literally just opening bottles of wine. (laughs) That is exclusively what I do to work out. Great for your upper body strength. It is. And look, you even got your legs in it at this point. Oh my god. Wait, can I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna do this part. I'm gonna make a mess. (laughs) I mean, I'm probably gonna make a mess too. So, oh no. I do it wrong. (gasps) I do it wrong. A little, but it's fine. We're figuring it out. Is it? I broke it. Okay, yeah. So <laughs> screw it out a bit more. <laughs> too deep, too deep, too deep. <laughs> All right. So you also, yeah. <laughs> I think we we hit it a little too close to the center here too. Oops. It's okay. <laughs> We're off to a really good start today, guys. We're always off to a good start. So how uh how was your week after the whole uh, Sarah Sarita game? Oh, there we go. She got it. So I don't know about you, Art. We're going to have a TMI moment with Lena. Yes. The the thing that happens once a month mm-hmm. had happened the week before we played the game and ended like the day before we played the game. Oh my God. We played the game and I'm on it again. Again? I How does a, that work? I had a two-day break. That was it. You said, psych, we're back. Yeah. My uterus was like, fuck you. You know that bag you made? Yeah. Yeah, like with the fallopian tubes, like uh-huh. flipping. That's what I imagine my uterus doing right now to me. Okay. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. My body, not yours. Literally, like a day or two after we played, I ended up getting a cold and I haven't been sick in like three years and just out of nowhere. <laughs> like, you can probably still hear it in my voice a little bit. <laughs> I'm having a hard time. Yeah. And then, like, a couple days later, I'm going to start pouring this wine. So these are two nice big glasses, in technically our, um, for margaritas. Yeah, the, the cactus martini glasses. I'm a fan of these. <laughs> All right. Well, cilantro. Cilantro. I actually like that a lot. 
It is easy drinking. Yeah, because like sometimes for me, sweet wines are too sweet. Mm -hmm. This is like that nice balance of it's not too sweet, but it's it's still got like that like, ooh, there's like fruit in here. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Me too. I'll make it with some dinner later at like nine o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, a couple of days after we played, like in, I have a smoke detector in my basement and in the middle of the fucking night, it just starts to go off and like it stops and then it goes off again. And so Josh and I go down to the basement and we like take the batteries out and just throw them on the floor because we're tired and pissed <laughs> and don't think much of it because this has kind of happened before and I just figured that the sensor was like dusty and old so it was like a, a false positive um so we go back upstairs the batteries are out of the of the smoke detector and then at like three thirty six in the morning I wake up and I hear the fucking fire alarm going off again so all right I'm gonna play devil's advocate before I retell my tale mm -hmm. of what happened this week and I think it was like we both <laughs> had this experience on the same night we figured out oh god so with these fire alarms that you have in the house. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm looking at one over there in the corner. Yeah, it's like a regular ass smoke yeah. detector. So even when you take the batteries out, though, mm -hmm. it's hooked up to your electric. Well, that's the thing. This one, you, like, literally popped off. It was it's, it was just on a little holder underneath oh, really? the staircase, and you can just pop it off. Oh, that's weirder. Yeah, it's not connected to anything. Okay, because I was going to say, like, that's, that's hooked up to your electric. Yeah, some of them are, but the one in the basement is not. Oh, I don't like that. Yeah, so I'm like, okay, I'm oh. just going to ignore that. No, I don't like that at all. Um, okay. I was trying really hard to like be like skeptical I about all this. I appreciate it, but no. <laughs> so the same night that you were having fire alarm issues, mm -hmm. um, I had like night terrors all night. Oh, God. To the point where I had like, I was laying on my back. Mm-hmm. And I don't remember what I was dreaming. I just remember that, like, I had this overwhelming sense of, like, someone is in here. Ew. And I remember feeling, and it could have just, like, been in the dream. Mm -hmm. But I remember feeling like someone was pushing me up into a sitting position. Ugh. And, like, I woke up sitting up. I don't like that. I don't like it either. I don't like that for you. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I'm like, I... I remember like laying back down <laughs> and being like big, <laughs> which is my cat. And like my cat came into bed and I'm like, okay, I feel better now. I'm yeah. going to cuddle the kitten and I'm just going to like roll over on my side and like pretend this didn't happen. This is fine. It's all fine. But before I had like gone back to sleep, I looked at my phone and it was like 3.30. What the fuck? <laughs> we fucked around and found out. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, since then, I've cleansed this space that we're in. So, you know, hopefully if anything was here, it's on its way. Hopefully. But we still have our pennies, too. We so do like still we're, have our pennies. We're so. safe on that one. Yeah. <laughs> we're good for now. And I, I will fully admit <sighs> that at least three times this week, I did, like, pull the penny out of my pocket, throw it over my shoulder while asking, like, am I still playing? <laughs> please say no. Please say no. Thankfully, they all said no, but like she lies. Yeah, well, you're braver than me because I haven't <laughs> attempted at all. I'm just like, no, I'm going to burn some incense and say some things, and maybe they'll go away. Well, no, because it's just it's like, have you have you felt like like someone watching you type feeling? Um, not really. Sometimes I get that before we were playing, but I think that's just my anxiety. <laughs> okay. And I'm, I mean, it totally probably is my anxiety too. Mm -hmm. And every time I've tested this person and they're, they're on the other end, they're just like, bitch, <laughs> do some mindfulness. <laughs> It'd be worse. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Well, we have our, our pleasantly dry and sweet goat white wine. Goat wine. <laughs> Shall we dive in? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, our tale begins with a little bit of a backstory. Okay. Um, so it is 1584. Wow. Sir Walter Raleigh requests permission from Queen Elizabeth I to establish a colony in North America. Yay. And kind of. <laughs> the two are like BFFs. Um. And she grants him permission. Uh, so she issued the letters of patent 
or the letters patent, mm-hmm. which are the legal documents for the venture, uh, permitting him to, quote, discover, search, find out, and view such remote, heathen, and barbarous lands, countries, and territories not actually possessed by any Christian prince and inhabited by Christian people, to hold, occupy, and enjoy forever all the soil of all such lands, countries, territory, ter- territories, so to be discovered or possessed. Oh, wow, that didn't feel good. So, in effect, what this uh, patent actually gives Rally the right to, mm-hmm. um, and it gives him <coughs> exclusive rights to possess and exploit resources of the land uh-huh. while being protected by the crown so long as the land wasn't inhabited by Christians, a.k.a. other Europeans. Right. So she basically gave him the go-ahead, like, I'm going to turn the other way. You do what you need Mm -mm. to do. Wasn't even, I'm turning the other way. It's like, we support this. Oh, my God. I hate it. Yeah. So the goal was to claim the landmass of North America. Right. So that he could launch raids on the Spanish West Indies Mm. and their annual treasure fleets. Aw. Yeah. So they were trying to, like... Fuck, fuck with the Spaniards. Hunt. Yeah. Yeah, that's no, like they were they were like, "Oh, you mean you're transporting precious valuable goods?" Mm-mm. I'm going to I'm going to take that. So that was the goal. Uh so by April 1584, uh two small ships dispatched commanded by Philip I'm Am- I'm going to butcher these names by the way. I'm warning everybody now. Mm-hmm. Uh Philip Amadas and Arthur Barlow. I'm going to say it's Barlow. You did your best. Yeah. On um, reconnaissance. Reconnaissance. No, no, no. Wait. Reconnaissance? Reconnaissance. Okay. Yeah. That word. Expeditions, uh, which arrived at the Outer Banks a few months later. Mm. Um, and there they discovered numerous fertile islands with many renewable resources. Wow. Yay. No, not really. I say that with sarcasm. I know. It's bad. <laughs> Uh, so among those natural renewable resources, uh-huh. there were people already living there. Already living there. So the local Indians were described as, quote, oh, no. very handsome and goodly people. Oh. And in their behavior, as mannerly and as civil as any European. What a backhanded compliment. Uh, yeah, it's, oh, man. Uh, so during these explorations of the Fertile Islands, In the Outer Banks, one island in particular was identified as the most suitable for a settlement, Mm -hmm. Roanoke. Mm. The island was at that time 10 miles long, two and a half miles wide, and inhabited by peaceful Indians who were identified by Raleigh as allies. Okay. So the explorers brought back um, their own accounts as well as two Indians. (laughs) Why? Um. To, to talk about what was going uh, on there. So they brought back um, Mantillo okay. and Juan Cheese. Right. Again, I am butchering these names. <laughs> but I'm trying. When you sound it out, it's Juan Cheese. Mm. Um, so they were two Indians from the area. From okay. two, two different tribes. Right. Um, but they brought back rumors of gold as well as a passage to the South Sea accessible by the head of a large river called Occam. Hmm. Raleigh was like super thrilled with all this information and began planning a full scale expedition to plant a colony on Roanoke Island the following year. I'm scared of that word expedition. Uh, It's not a, it's, you should, colony too (laughs) is Mm. not a great one. Like Mm. all of these words are not good. Sorry Uh, for white people. Mm -hmm. April 1585. Mm -hmm. Raleigh Raleigh prepped a fleet of five ships. And two pinnaces, mm. uh, which is a small boat with sails or oars, forming part of the equipment of a warship or other large vessel, Ooh. carrying approximately 600 soldiers and seamen. Seamen. <laughs> 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 um, under the command of Sir Richard Grenville, uh, there was difficulty crossing like apparently like storms or Mm. maybe they got lost it wasn't really specified it just said that it was a hard voyage sure yeah so (laughs) they so they left in april Uh and they got there in june 
Why do white people always get so lost out at sea? I've don't just ask been... for directions. I, yeah. They're not wayfinders. No. No. So. Just well, something I've noticed historically. We're not good at finding things. And when we do, we, I, I don't need to tell you guys this. Yeah. Fuck Columbus. Um, so in June of 1585, they landed finally and explored the area for a few months before sending Ralph Lane, uh, who was a vet of the wars in Ireland, mm. to establish a fort and settlement on Roanoke Island. Grenville and the fleet departed shortly after for England for more supplies and settlers, leaving behind a garrison of 108 men under Lane's command. Okay. So my question there is, why 108? Right. Why do you need that many people guarding? Well, no, places? like, no, the, the, that many people makes sense to me. It's right. those extra eight people, though. <laughs> you, it's just, you wanted a, an even number? I, I, I just want the number to make sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want it to be, like, 110, give mm-hmm. them two more people, or just nice, 100. Nice rounded number. Yes. Like, <laughs> I appreciate that it's even, but, like, come on, dude. <laughs> so, winter and spring of 1585 to 86, Lane sent out two exploratory parties, one to the north, one to the west. Hmm. The first party discovered the mouth of the Chesapeake Bay and made contact with the natives there and along the southern shore of the bay. The second explored the Chowan and Roanoke rivers, and by this time, Lane concluded that the colony should be relocated to the Chesapeake Bay area. Because it was safer, it was more, um, there was more resources. And the way that the Outer Banks are positioned is Mm -hmm. it's shallow waters surrounding islands. Yeah. Their ships couldn't actually come close to the land. So they had to use the pinnaces to transport things back and forth because it was too shallow. However, the bay would have allowed them to make a port and have their boats come right into the bay and then right out. Okay. So it, to me, Lane's like got a head on his shoulders. Makes sense. He he a smart cookie. However, things started to go south. Of course, and they do. In late June of 1586, Lane abandoned Roanoke Island uh-huh. due to hostilities between the English and the Secotoan or the Secotans. Mm. Secotans. I'm not pronouncing that word. This word right at all. You're trying. I'm trying. Uh, who were the natives on Roanoke Island Mm -hmm. who had been feeding them Uh, and then stopped. Yeah, let me guess. The white people were taking advantage of their um, their niceness. Yeah, That and like, I sigh heavily as I prep for this and also trigger warning. So you know that thing that men do sometimes when they're just ignorant assholes? Which one? Like Columbus. (laughs) I I can take a guess. (laughs) Yeah, uh. that was happening. Like it, it's there's a whole bunch of documentation on like the abuses that these people endured under Lane's men. I'm sure, and none of them good. Yeah, the natives are just like we're trying to help you and like welcome you to this land, and you're just being assholes. Mm-hmm. Why? Mm-hmm. Because white people. Because white people. <sighs> we both took a drink after that one. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So, upon returning to England, Lane reported the benefits of the Chesapeake Bay location and the dangers of Roanoke. However, Raleigh decided to sponsor one final expedition and placed John White in command. John White had been there for all of the expeditions thus far. Okay. So he knew, like, what the area was and, like, kind of knew the people, knew the cult, like, like, was knowledgeable and was willing to do it so april 1587 i don't know why it kept being in april i think like reasonably it's because the weather is supposed to like be turning and like it's it's better weather at sea Mm -hmm. but like all of these dates are like april april everything happens in april Uh uh-huh april 1587 white led a group of 118 men again why this number (laughs) someone explained to me why the eights (laughs) They're the interns. I don't like this. 118 men, women, and children, including his own family and friends. So his Mm. wife, his daughter, son-in-law, all of them. The whole fam. All fam. Departed to establish a settlement on the Chesapeake Bay called the City of Raleigh. Okay. So they were naming it after Sir Walter Asshole, who (laughs) got pretty much permission by the queen 
to like do whatever he wants. Do whatever he wants and reap all the benefits. Fuck that guy. Yeah. However, they never reached that destination. Of course not, because we discussed. Yeah. <laughs> so the boats transporting them refused to take them any further than Roanoke Island. Hmm. And left them there. Oh. Like, took them to the island, kicked them off, and were like, fuck you. We're not going any farther. Mm -hmm. Interesting. In August of 1587, White's daughter gave birth to Virginia Dare. Virginia Dare was the first documented American with European lineage. So, like, that's, like, the, I, to me, that's the coolest part of the story. Right. The most okayest. Yeah. Like... The most wholesome thing that happens here <laughs> is that the first American with European heritage is born. Mm -hmm. She was like a, a symbol of hope for mm -hmm. this for this new land. Yeah. However, mm -hmm. after remaining on the island for only six weeks, White returned to England at the end of August for more supplies and reinforcements, mm -hmm. namely reinforcements, no, namely like more people, okay, um, food and weapons. That trip lasted three years. See? Getting lost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it was also, so if I remember, like, I don't have this in notes, so I'm probably not going to remember all of these notes, like, mm -hmm. these ones properly. There was a war happening. Ah. Uh, or, like, they were on the verge of war. That could set someone back a bit. And it was either with France or Spain. <laughs> One of the two, but whichever one had a very sh no, it was it was definitely Spain because I'm using the word armada. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they were at this point they were like on the verge of war with Spain. Mm. That and Spain had a very very strong armada, and their boats could not cross. They couldn't get out. Ah, uh, otherwise they were being attacked and sank. No, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, dangerous times. Mm hmm. So it took him three years to return. Jesus. Yeah. Upon his return, the colony had disappeared. Oh, dear. Leaving behind only a cryptic message, Crow carved into a nearby tree and Croatoan into a fence post that told him that they had, to him, mm -hmm. had told him that they moved to Croatoan Island, 50 miles south, where Mantio's people lived. So, Man and remember, Mantio was one of the Indians that yes. they brought back. Yes. So, he had come back with mm -hmm. White, stayed when White left. Yeah. And the, this theory, is that Mantio saw the people suffering, mm -hmm. was like, we got to get the fuck out of here, <laughs> and brought them home. Yes. Where at that point, if that happened, yeah. the historical evidence and <clears throat> record would pretty much be that these people acclimated mm -hmm. and absorbed the culture. And, yeah, became part of And their, became part of the Croatoan yeah, their culture. natives' culture. Yeah, I mean that's smarter. I mean, most most colonies, from what I understand, they don't they don't do very well on their own. No, so they needed the help. Yeah, none none of these were really set up well. Not no. a lot of forethought. No. They they needed someone like a party planner. Yeah, come in and tell them what to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Be like, okay, so you have a hundred and eighteen people crossing the ocean. What do you need for that? <laughs> How much food? You have 118 people. One of them is pregnant. What do you need? Let's plan this out together. <laughs> Some of them are women. What do they need? <laughs> More draws. Yes. Um, so when White found these clues, uh, he attempted to reach them, but never made it to Croatoan Island due to a storm. Mm. And then he gave up. Just like that, huh? And then returned the to England. <laughs> oh no, it's raining. I guess we can't go find them. Wait, oh, well, this dude, this this dude, <laughs> went, stayed for six weeks. Said peace out, y'all. They went home. <laughs> he stayed there for three years, and then was like, "Oh, they left." He didn't. Well, look I guess very I hard. should try to find them. I don't know. I felt a raindrop. I'm gonna go back to England. It's just it's so wet here and it's like it's damp <laughs> and cold and you know, I'm I'm just not vibing with it. <laughs> that, My that's chakras it. That's are fucked. Right there. I'm not vibing with it. But no, you you like if you think about this too hard, and I have thought about it a little bit hard. Your wife, kid, mm -hmm. and grandkid. Yeah. And you abandoned them and then did not look hard, dude. So who is your mistress in England? What's her name? 
Sounds like he had it set up in those three years he was gone. It kind of sounds like this man like set it up to kill 118 people. He's 119 because like, be the kid wasn't counted at the initial count. Mm. Yeah. So never made it because of a storm and returned to England. Um, after being in England for a few years, he moved to Ireland and is thought to have died there sometime in the early 17th century. All right. Like there's there's no real records. He just kind of faded mm -hmm. away. So, but what happened to the colony, like what actually happened to the colony, remains a mystery. Theories include that they did move to Croatoan Island and integrated into the natives' culture. Recently, in 2007, Ooh. there were some efforts to test DNA of people, <gasps> local, like local natives, to Ooh. see if there was European descent. Mm -hmm. However, the tests were determined to be inconclusive. What? Yeah. So another theory was that they ran out of supplies. Mm -hmm. Things were hostile with the sec... Mm. Hold on. <laughs> I'm not gonna, I don't want to mess this name up. Sound it out. No, it's, no I, it's, it's more about... This is one of those I have like a bullet point mm. instead of like actual things <laughs> written out. It's the, the secra... Secra... Secatin. Okay. Secatins. There it is. Um, the relations with the Secatins escalated mm. and it got worse. And that after one specific attack Ooh. from the natives sent them back to the water where they attempted to use the penises oh, no. to travel all the way back to England no. and got lost at sea. Of course they were going to get lost. Yeah. Right. White people <laughs> in white. littler boats. <laughs> in boats. <laughs> um. So, and that, that theory, some people like to, that's the second most popular one because there were no traces of the pinnaces or any of the other smaller boats or any watercraft from that time period mm. anywhere okay. at Roanoke, which is weird, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't, like, if they had gone to Croatoan Island, they would have traveled by water. Yeah. So it would have been moved. And that, uh, and that would make most sense if they went to uh, Croatoan Island. Croatoan Island, why else would it be carved into a tree? Yeah. Almost twice. I mean, and see, the, the reason I think that Croatoan was carved into the tree mm -hmm. was men, 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 names are hard, guys. Menato, men, mento, menteo, menteo, mentio, name of wonderful native human being that lived with them. <laughs> if he had been there with them still at that point, mm hmm. It's possible, too, that he just carved the name of his homeland into a tree. That's true. Like if they were teaching him the, queen, the Queen's English. Ah, uh, yeah. Like, yeah, he was practicing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah. He, he could have just been like, I'm getting fancy with it, guys. Okay. Mm -hmm. Another theory was that they were killed and abducted, uh, killed and slash abducted by the Secotans. Mm. So, a lot of Native cultures have kind of an emphasis on use mm -hmm. and, like, not wa not wasting and not being wasteful. Yeah. So, it's a big possibility that they killed most of the men and then took the women and children into their care uh, or into their tribes. Right. Which was something that happened yeah. quite frequently in the early colonist days where they would abduct mm -hmm. people and... If I'm remembering certain stories, there there are cases where they abducted uh, children, both boys and girls, to try and replace the children that were killed by the colonists. Oh, yeah, just really sad all Isn't around. It? <laughs> it's just bad. So, another theory is that they waited, said "fuck this," <laughs> and then they moved to Chesapeake Bay. Yeah, they're like, it's been three fucking years, yeah. and we're like out of food. We need to move. Yeah, uh, and because. It, would, it had been known that Chesapeake Bay was their ultimate location that they were trying to reach. Mm -hmm. They could have actually moved there without white. Mm. However, if they did that, it's very likely that they were killed by Pocahontas's dad. <laughs> so John Smith. Oh, boy. The asshole who, like, Disney made the love interest <sighs> a, of Pocahontas, but Pocahontas was a 12-year-old child. Talk about it. As, there's a lot there. John Smith claims that the chief who would have been Pocahontas' father, bragged about killing a group of white colonists 
who at the turn of the century were living in modern day Virginia. Hmm. Interesting. So there's a strong possibility yeah. that could have been the lost colony of Roanoke. Mm hmm. But there's no hard evidence that it's supports this claim. It's just word of mouth. And I'm sorry, but like John Smith is not the highest on my list for like reliable <laughs> first sources. No. So some some like supporting facts of some things of like what could have happened mm -hmm. was that they could have moved inland. So a stone was discovered in 1937 by the Crowan River, which was about 65 miles west of Roanoke. And it held an account in Elizabethan English hmm. and provides a historical, historical record of events that state the colonists moved further west past the wetlands until an attack in 1591 killed most of the settlers, including White's daughter and granddaughter. Oh. Uh, it painted a very grim picture of the last days of the seven survivors lost in the woods and dying off one by one. Wow, that's dark. It's called the Dare Stone. Oh. Yeah. So, and the reason that they think that this stone is more credible than other such stones that have been found mm -hmm. is because it is in Elizabethan English. Yeah. And it's it matches more along the lines of the like lettering and penmanship that you would have found in the time. Right. So, it's got more credit. However, people are still highly skeptical that this is actually a thing. Yeah. It's just so hard to say because evidence is so scattered. It seems yeah. like. It, it really, really is. Mm. However, there's another piece to this puzzle, mm. which is John White's mystery map. Mystery map? So it was noted earlier that John White had been on every single expedition Yay. with this group of people who were going to settle Roanoke. And he had mapped out the area that they had explored. However, Nick Cage would have loved this map. <laughs> you know why? Why? Because it had fucking invisible ink on it, which <laughs> under lights displayed a tiny red and blue symbol that was likely the marker for a fort. That's fucking cool. So what they would do is they would use like milk or like lemons, lemons and like <laughs> other, other, other things to create invisible ink that much like Nick Cage describes in that movie, <laughs> when he is applied, become visible. Like, this is actually science. This is, like, he, that, that part of the movie wasn't bullshit. That's cool. Which is very cool. <laughs> and it was very, very commonly used in the 15 and 16 and 1700s as a way to protect information from mm -hmm. spies. Mm -hmm. So the theory is that during Raleigh's initial exploration, a fort was created but concealed in the map. So to keep the location safe from foreign agents who were at court and also trying to settle America. Yeah. So that if Roanoke failed, they had a safe haven to retreat to. Backup plan. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now here's what gets fun. Uh. In 2013, scientists tried to follow the map to find this mystery fort. Mm -hmm. And they were able to discover potential structures under the ground at the location that they think was on the map. Ooh. However, as good old-fashioned excavation and digging were never used in this, oh. this uh, project, they never completely determined if this was, in fact, a, a fort or the lost colony of Roanoke. Interesting. Yeah. So it is currently still a mystery today. Uh, from what I've read, the group that did use, like, the fancy schmancy mm -hmm. ground penetrating nonsense to, like, get a picture of what happened underground, they did find structures that were um, wooden Ooh. under the ground. What? Somewhere between three and nine feet. That's crazy. Which... Pulling out the archaeology degree here. <laughs> Stretch into it. Haven't used this in a bit. Put on your, your graduation cap. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Millersville. Um, like, depth-wise, depending on what the rest of the area looks like, that actually could be a colonial site. Whoa. And, um... So... Do, do you think they need to explore that a little bit more? Oh, definitely. <laughs> and I think the last thing I read about that is that they are still trying to find funds. Like, they're trying to find someone to uh, fund the 
ex like the excavation of this area yeah. to see if their theory is right. And they're using like these oh. the images and the scans of the you know previous... of what they did yeah. to be like, there's something here, guys. Oh my god. Look, here it's like the foundation of a of a building. Why is no one funding this? Because at, like as far as most scholars are actually concerned, mm-hmm. Roanoke is not so much a mystery. I think it's fascinating. I think it's cool, yeah. And it what's what I think also is fascinating is that it served as a what not to do for Jamestown. No, like like what? literally, like if you read the Jamestown shit, like uh-huh. it talks about Roanoke. It talks about the colony that they tried to f- to form in Roanoke slash Chesapeake Bay. Right. But they don't never say it's Roanoke. It's the the colony that they had initially sent. Yeah. By Walter Raleigh to be Raleigh, like the city of Raleigh, right at Chesapeake. They don't call it by name what we know it as. They don't because it wasn't going to be what we call it. Right. It was going to be the city of Raleigh. Mm-hmm. So they they talk about how the city of Raleigh failed to set up a colony. Oh my god! And then they used everything that they did for Roanoke, and we're like, okay, so we learned from our mistakes. <laughs> Let's do better. And Jamestown was. Uh-huh successfully settled unfortunately Mm -hmm. unfortunately (laughs) sorry i had to throw that in there so like in some ways this is an incredibly like for me as like the history buff this is incredibly interesting case Mm -hmm. like you've got the first american with european heritage yeah you've got what not to do to build a settlement Uh uh-huh and there's potentially like an excavation that could happen if funding is provided. Yeah, I think it's worth finding out. I think it'd be interesting whether or not, like, it is Roanoke just to see what it is. Yeah, exactly. Because, like, one of the big things that Raleigh and Grenville were trying to find in America mm-hmm. was gold. Yeah. They heard tale of That's right. gold. <laughs> Cities of gold. Mm. You know. And I would be incredibly curious as to what is there Mm -hmm. because if they did follow that map correctly and that is the mystery invisible ink section of the map right like i think that that's a lot of that could have that could hold some like very interesting historical record for us yeah if it's if it was supposed to be kept secret Mm -hmm. wondering what they were trying to hide or protect Mm. it's area 51 Mm. (laughs) the original (laughs) area 51 yes Started all the way back with Queen Elizabeth I. She's a lizard. She is a lizard. <laughs> it's confirmed. There was invisible ink on a map. Facts. I heard it here first. <laughs> so there's a lot of spooky, weird, horrible things that can send shivers down our spines with the history aspects. Indeed. However, I would love to hear some of the actual spooky stuff. Yes. Lena, do you know what I love? A shot of Annie Get Your Gun with a chaser of ginger ale? I mean, yeah, but I also love not leaving my house. Dude, same. I love my bed and my blankets, and they have accepted me as one of their own, and if I leave now, they will never trust me again. Don't compromise that relationship. I can't. But Especially right now. Yes, especially during a pandemic. Don't leave your house. And the last thing I want to do is go out to the grocery store when I could just have everything I need delivered to my house. Is that why you Instacart? That is exactly why I Instacart. They can deliver fresh groceries straight to my door sometimes in as little as one hour. Or I can schedule the delivery if I'm not going to be around. Instacart now also has multiple options based on your needs from pet stores to your local pharmacy and our personal favorite, even alcohol. Hell yeah. And they even have a section for people who use food stamps, so you can find exactly what you need all in one place. So follow the link in our show notes to go to instacart.com to get free delivery on your first order of $10 or more. Instacart. Never take a step in a grocery store ever the f*** again. Hey, Lauren. Hey, Lena. How do we do this? Do what? Make our podcast. Oh, we use Buzzsprout. Do you want to know one of the best things about it? What? You can start a show for free. That's my favorite four-letter F word. 
Buzzsprout is hands down the easiest and best way to launch, promote, and track your podcast. Your show can be online and listed in all the major podcast directories like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and wherever else you get your podcasts. Buzzsprout wants their podcasters to succeed. So in addition to distributing your podcast for you, you'll get a great looking podcast website, detailed analytics, promotional tools, and they'll even help you pick out the right equipment for you. And that's just scratching the surface. So follow the link in our show notes to let Buzzsprout know we sent you and get a great deal on every subscription level. If you sign up for a paid plan, this also gets you a $20 Amazon gift card that you could put towards, I don't know, a new microphone for your podcast. Oh, that's a low blow. <laughs> and of course, this helps support our show. So follow the link in our show notes to go to buzzsprout.com and join over 100,000 podcasters already using Buzzsprout to get their message out to the world. Buzzsprout, the easiest way to start a podcast. So, as this was a foundation of, like, probably terrible things, definitely terrible things. Oh, 100%. <sighs> horrible, horrible things. Let me pull up my notes here. Oh, we're so official. We have notes, guys. We got notes. So like, I can remember uh, things. We're so organized. So, this has been deemed one of the most haunted cities in the state, Roanoke. Mm. So, we're going to talk about the the OG... European American Virginia Dare. There's a lot of lore around her. I think just because her existence was so romanticized in a way. Well, I think if I do the math right, if that stone is an accurate depiction mm -hmm. of what happened, she died at four years old. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. Um, some speculate that she never survived infancy. But she has been the subject of ghost sightings and the subject of supernatural and even romance novels for years. Wait, pause. Yes. No, go back. Um, romance novels? Yeah. What, what Probably. kind of romance novels? <laughs> Most of which are in poor taste, but like there's one um, where like she has a daughter and it's like about her daughter and... She was like, four. Yeah. <laughs> she, she, I'm honestly she more, was an infant. <laughs> I'm, I'm just more terrified of like, yeah. there's a romance novel and the four-year-old is the main romantic character. It's, it's a weird thought. Mm. But she's appeared in like Marvel comics too as like a teenager and stuff like that. See, and I thought that the name sounded familiar. I just thought that they used the name. Mm. I didn't think that it was actually supposed to yeah. be Virginia Dare. Yeah, it's weird. I don't like that. <laughs> That's weird. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, I don't like that. Yeah, so uh. there are many stories about Virginia Dare, but the most famous one is from a colonial North Carolinian folklore alleged to have been passed down for over 300 years. Mm. So the story goes that uh, Manteo, your your main man there, yep. um, learns that when Chase, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say it properly, what was it? The Wanchies? Wanchies, yes. Yeah. Yes, the Wanchies plan to slaughter the Roanoke colony after John White leaves. Uh, Manteo is able to rescue most of the colony and the, the survivors assimilate into Croatoan culture. And Virginia grows up to be known as Winona Ska. She and the Croatoan chieftain's son, Oki Sk Sorry, hold on. I got to slow down. Oh, this no. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oki Sko. Oki Sko. Okay fall in love, and plan to marry. However, there's a jealous old witch doctor named Chico in the mix, and he wants to claim Winona Ska for himself. And I laugh at the name Chico a little bit because well, that's my friend's dog's name. I mean... So I just imagine so, this little dog named Chico. See, all I all I think of is, like, with the word, the name Chico doesn't help either, but, like, you know, um, Hello Novellas? Yes. That's all I'm hearing right now. So I'm hearing Chico. a telenovela. <laughs> it's the Chico worst time. Suave. Well, her name is Ska at the end there. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a type of music. <laughs> bit up, bit up. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Yes. So, so, bad telenovela. Yes. Okay. Chico Suave wants to claim Winona Ska for himself. When she inevitably... <laughs> I'm trying to tell a romantic story. It's not romantic. It's bad. <laughs> okay. Continue. When she inevitably rejects the witch doctor, he turns her into a white doe. 
In, a, in an attempt to regain her human form, Okisko arms himself with magical pearl arrows. These arrows, when pierced through her heart, were supposed to return her to normal. But, as luck would have it, when Cheese's son uh, decides he wants to kill the charmed deer with a silver arrow. Mm. For what reason, I'm not entirely sure. It's a telenovela. Just because, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shit, sorry. <laughs> to the T. Um, so both arrows end up piercing Virginia Dare, a.k.a. Virginia Doe, a.k.a. Winona Scott, in the heart, transforming her back into normal, but then also killing her in the process. Overcome with grief, Okisko prays for her resurrection, which does happen, but only on the condition, quote, that she is again turned into a doe of soft eyes and a gentle heart. And to this day, North Carolinians claim to see a white doe haunt the woods of the Outer Banks. I mean, is it really haunting if it's just an albino deer? I think that'd be really pretty. They are. <laughs> Wait, have I told you the story about how, like, before my parents' housing development was, like, fully completed with all the not, like, cookie cutter houses? Yeah, it was a, it was, like, farmland, right? Yeah, it was farmland. Yeah. And we were one of the, like, my parents were one of the six houses that, like, first started that development. Mm -hmm. And there would be, like, a pack of deer that Aww. would walk through the yard. Oh. And... The one day we were all like hanging out and we watched this and it was a pack of deer and it was a partially albino deer was in the <gasps> middle of the pack and they were like trying to camouflage her and they were all moving together That's and she so was sweet. gorgeous because oh she had like big patches of white on her. It was very pretty. She had vitiligo. Yeah. <laughs> but like at the same time, I, my, my question still stands. Is it really haunting if it's just an albino deer? If it's, if it's more of... Yeah, if people claim it's like a, a ghostly sighting, I wonder if it's like a glowing deer. Like Yeah, the, I um, wanna know more. Cause what is it, a Patronus? Oh uh, yeah, like a uh, yeah, Harry Potter. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> no, but like the the genetic trait that carries Binism. Albinism? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Like that that is a genetic thing. So if there is an albino deer in the area and mm -hmm. it's breeding Aww. and has offspring they are likely to also carry that genetic disposition where they Ooh. could end up being albino. Pretty. So there could just be... Just albino deer hanging out in the outer Shit banks. tons of albino deer. I would like to see one. I would, like, I would like to see a fully albino deer. But now, yeah, since there aren't many, like, hauntings related to the colony itself, I thought I would just tell of some, some local hauntings that are famous in the Virginia area. Well, and I think... Anything that's, like, close to this yeah. counts because, according to the history, they could be literally anywhere in Virginia. Exactly. Like, we don't know. They don't know. <laughs> no one knows. This could be them. Let's find out. So we've been hanging out around Pennsylvania for a while, but now we're starting to, we're starting to migrate. We're going to Virginia this week. What's up? Yeah. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so, most Roanoke residents may be familiar with the story. It's the woman in black. The story goes that for just a few days in the year of 1902, a mysterious and beautiful, <laughs> beautiful woman dressed in black with her face partially hidden struck fear into local residents. Her targets were married men that were traveling at night. Thank you. She's topping me off. <laughs> There's a lot of phrasing in this episode. Anyway, her <laughs> targets were married men that were traveling at night. As they walked home, she would appear to them and whisper in their ears, calling them by name. There is one account in a local newspaper, the Roanoke Times, from that year in 1902, from a prominent local merchant, and it says, Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> the woman was only a couple feet behind him, and he naturally increased his pace. Faster and faster he walked, but in spite of his efforts, the woman gained on him until... With the greatest of ease and without any apparent effort, she kept alongside of him. Where do you turn off? She asked of him. He replied in a hoarse voice, 12th Avenue. Bro, why would you tell her? <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, is it, a, is it a relatively, like, new stranger idea danger to not, like, tell strangers where you live? <laughs> is that new? <laughs> Write it in, let us know. He sounded panicked. Oh, no, man. Ere he was aware, he had hand upon his shoulder. He tried to shake it off, but without success. 
You are not the first married man I have seen to his home this night. She spoke in a low and musical voice. <laughs> sounds like a really like persistent hooker. Mm. <laughs> That's what this sounds like. Mm. Okay. So she followed him all the way across the yard, and when he finally reached his doorstep, he turned around and she was gone. Later that same year, sightings of a similar-looking specter were reported in West Virginia and Nebraska, but she was never seen in Roanoke again. Some people theorize that while alive, she was betrayed by her husband, so now she escorts married men home to keep them out of trouble, while others say she tries to sway men away from their path and cause discord in their marriage as a means of revenge. But I like to go with the uh, the first first See, like, I... That, that that ended up being like surprisingly wholesome. Mm-hmm. She's just you know <laughs> looking out for the wives. Yeah, that's what I like to think. Being like, yo, women gotta stick together. Mm-hmm. That's actually a song from a movie or a TV show that <laughs> does it, that is a bad song about <laughs> women and sticking together. <laughs> Watch Crazy Ex Girlfriend. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. So one one question I did have though when you were talking about that is have you ever seen the daniel radcliffe woman in black yeah i That's, have actually like is that based off of this actually i don't remember i haven't seen that movie in years but I, i'm yeah i'm wondering where it takes place because maybe because i don't remember much of that movie other than it was daniel it's, radcliffe it's apparently like a very famous lore in virginia i mean so i've read i could see that because everywhere does have like local lores and legends, like mm-hmm. Jersey mm-hmm. Devil versus Mothman versus I'll be the Elba Twitch. Yes. <laughs> He's my new Patronus. <laughs> he just comes out of your wand and just chews on an apple and then throws it at the <laughs> opponent. <laughs> no, but like I, I would be interested to hear if there's current day sightings of the Lady in Black. I don't know. It sounds like she just popped up really quick and then disappeared. I wonder if like this is this was around the time that she died and she's like, this is my unfinished business. And then she just peaced out. Maybe. But I don't know. But it also kind of sounds like a hooker. A little bit. Just like, hear me out. So like, Mm -hmm. you're a hooker. You dress in all black Mm -hmm. to look sexy in the time. Black is always sexy. That's what I always say. And then you're chasing after married men. Because they've got the money and they They don't want to, they want discretion too. So you get extra for being discreet. Mm -hmm. So you're chasing after married men. After a bit of doing that, you work up some leg muscles. You're able to keep up with them. And they don't (laughs) think that you'd be able to because you're a delicate woman type. (laughs) And then after doing your job for a little bit, you've got a strong right arm. This woman with the theories (laughs) coming in hot. (laughs) You know. In in her line of business, she's got strong arms. <laughs> she's built like a bull. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> so, like, when they try to shake you off, you've got the grip. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like a vice. <laughs> All right, that sounded way more sexual than I thought it would coming out of my mouth. I didn't mean for it to. I will say that right now. <laughs> but then, like, okay. So say, like, you're working an area for a bit. Yeah. You hook up with the married men. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, you've run out of married men. Mm-hmm. You got to move on. Yep. You don't go to a different town. You never go back to Roanoke until there's a new wave of young men exactly. who might want a cougar. Mm-hmm. You know? You got to try your other options, you know? Mm-hmm. You already tried this area. Move on to greener pastures. Yeah. That's one theory. That's a good theory. I think that's what, I think that's what's actually happening there. And then, like, when she stopped being a hooker, yeah, the black, the lady in black, like, disappears. Disappears as they stop being hookers at one point in their life. Stop being alive because <laughs> this is 2021 now and not 1902. Yeah, you know. So now here's a pop. Here's another popular one. Okay, it's the Grandin Theater. Hmm. Grandin, Grand, and then I N, Grandin. Okay. Theater. Cool. Built in 1932, downtown Roanoke residents can still go watch movies here. Ooh. And um, it kind of reminds me of, do you know the Colonial Theater in Phoenixville? Yeah, I go to Blobfest all the time. Yeah, so it has kind of like that vibe. It's old little theater in like downtown area. Well, that the Colonial is supposed to be haunted too. 
Really? Yeah, there's Ooh. a whole there's like a whole lore about it, we and like poke around there a bit. We we should go poke around Phoenixville. Yes. Also, because Phoenixville. Phoenixville's a fun time. Bars. Oh yeah. Well, we'll, yeah. we'll blend in with the local twenty three year olds. Yep. <laughs> Babyface <laughs> McGee's over here. Babyface McGee's. Are so. you a student? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> Give me the student discount, please. <laughs> oh boy. So. Over the years, <laughs> this theater had closed down a few times, most notably sometime in the 1950s, a homeless family took up residence in the projection booth while living there. <laughs> why are you laughing? Because of all the places you could do that in the theater, why the projection booth? Oh. It's got a window. You're, there's no privacy. I, I guess. Well, if no one was, like, coming in. That's fair. Uh, it sounds like the most place it's to me it sounds like the the best place to keep warm i think rather than like Maybe. a drafty theater okay area. all right all right i don't I, know i withdraw my laugh <laughs> <laughs> but while living there two of their young children tragically died one of whom was an infant oh virginia dare another another little virginia baby mm. so now at night when the theater is empty, um, employees will claim to hear a baby crying, and some have even seen a young boy wandering around the stairs. Uh, when one person tried to see if he was lost, the boy disappeared through a closed door. <laughs> Other people have heard laughter and glasses clinking uh, from upstairs, and one employee even claims to have seen a ghostly face peeking out from the projection room when he was the only one there. Yo, like, I know we've we've joked around about, like, the speed of moving chairs and yes, all that stuff. I have to say, I think if one thing was to like really get me in a haunted place, it would be like, I know I'm the only one in the building yes. or like the only other person in the building is like right beside me mm-hmm. and like a ghostly face just appears Ew. in like a window above me. Hello? That would get me. I, I, I will like fully admit like, I would scream, mm-hmm. and I would, I would, it would, it would call my Italian ancestors, and all of their power would come through <laughs> me. It would be the loudest scream. Scare a shoe would fly the across the room too. That's the one thing that I hate is peeking ghosts. You know what? If you're curious, just come out. Yeah. No, like I, if you, if you want to watch me, you come watch me in the same <laughs> room, not above me, and not in a window. I don't like it. It's creepy. Yes, and not in a corner. Motherfucker, stand in the middle of the room in a spotlight. Introduce yourself. I would rather see the young boy run through a fucking door than like a little face peeking out from the side of a corner of a wall or something. Yeah, see, because like Ugh. the like baby crying and like the kid stuff. We talked about this in Penhurst. To yeah. me, that's just more like my heart a breaks. Little, a little sad. And I want to just be like, dude, I'll bring you toys. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, do you like candy? Start like, singing. Singing, singing Disney princesses. <laughs> we'll, we'll play the Disney princess game I play with Lydia. Like, come on, like I like kid things I can't handle, but like adults, mm-hmm. fuck off. No, like fuck you know fuck better. Right off, you know better. <laughs> You're an adult. You died an adult, even though adults are just really like grown ass children. Yeah, you you are an adult. Knock it off. You scare me. Children, children just break my heart. That's I sad. will bring you like candies, and I will like. Toys and stuffies, and all, oh, all the Disney movies will start playing. That's what we gotta do on a next ghost on a ghost hunt. If there are children involved, you'll bring the you'll bring bring the Disney playlist. Is that? But also, like, and it wouldn't have anything to do with the fact that we were on a ghost hunt, because mm-hmm. I have this just in my purse currently. Mm-hmm. But I would also give candy because I have like I am an old lady. <laughs> I have with candies Werther's in I, your purse. I have no like right now. I have like mini Snickers. <laughs> lie i have like candy in my purse like i legitimately i have like a handful of candy in my bag that i use as the purse that i would be like well there are kids here here you go i can just leave leave the halloween candy here for you you're gonna be a great grandma i know (laughs) i'm a great wine aunt all right so our next location Mm -hmm. is the uh avnell plantation Oh God! Uh, yeah, the plant. The word uh, plantation never leads to anything. Good. Uh, no, it doesn't. 
um, otherwise known as Historic uh, Avenel or the William M. Burwell House. Yeah, nice try of taking the word plantation out, guys. We know what it is. <laughs> it has two other names. Please, please use them. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Built in 1838, oh, the God. ghost that haunts these grounds is the oldest daughter of the Burwell family. I'm sorry, I have to sound out her name. Uh-oh. There's a lot of T's and a lot of I's in my brain. Letitia, Letitia Burwell. Okay. Yeah, let, that thought's Letitia. Sorry. No, it's Letitia. it's the, the L names. Like, uh-huh. my family practices how to say L names because we're all expected to name any kids we have with an L name. Our family is full of L's. Yeah, we're all L's. So, no, that's Letitia. Letitia, okay. Yeah. Yes, oldest daughter of the Burwell family, Letitia Burwell, or the white lady. No shit. There's also <laughs> a member of the Adams family with the name Letitia. Oh, yeah, you're right. Is that the aunt? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you're right. Fun facts. Oh my god, I can't believe I forgot about that. It's, it's we're we're recording this right before Halloween. So, <laughs> fun facts. Oh yeah, that's right. It's not even Halloween yet when we're recording this. Nope. Um, happy November. Happy November. Oh, I hate it. Yeah. Go back to October. I have not have had a good October as much as I love this month. I have not had a good October. Neither have it I. is going on week three, and I still don't have my car back. Dude, I'm going to Karen. These dealerships for you i'm upset all right okay so, cool the white lady the white lady oh my god <laughs> okay Sorry. the white lady who built the plantation we're there oh, oh, god. oh shit. Sorry, that was very loud i just realized that. Look at those waveforms. Oh, oh my sorry. Goodness. You're going to have a fun time editing me tonight. All right. So the white lady who built yes. the plantation. Let's go. All right. She is called such because she walks around the property dressed in a long white dress from the early 1900s. And she's mm-hmm. white. And she's white. Musicians often use the property to practice and will often hear a woman singing along to th- their performance and visitors will sometimes smell her perfume. Paranormal investigators who have visited the property will also report orbs and even voices. Uh, one that said, hi, kitty, kitty, kitty. And, <laughs> <laughs> and they also caught a voice that said, the secret is in the wall. So <laughs> maybe it's the fact that we had a map with invisible ink in it. I think they're connected. I think they're connected. Break down Someone every fucking Cage. wall. <laughs> Call Nicholas Cage Call right Nick. now. Come on. Hey, 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 Nick Cage. We need you. National Treasure Part 5. Is that, are there four? Uh, I don't know. Okay, thank God. I don't know. I was like, I know, I know there are at least two. I know there are three. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure four. there are three. <laughs> oh, God. Part four. I was like, did they make, because number three was bad, but did they make a number four? I don't know. Oh, my God. All right, let's drink to that. <laughs> Mm. Or because of that. This is why I drank. Number one, though. I liked number one. It was, it was, they made number two, and I was like, what is happening? This is too much. But investigators have also reported the bed in the Lee room where, sorry, Robert E. Lee used to sleep as a guest. Uh, this is the South. And it's a plantation. And it's a plantation. And it was built by the white, white lady. lady. <laughs> um, the bed uh, will look slept in with messy blankets and an indentation in the pillow where a head might lay. But, like, is it an, a room that people still sleep in? Because um, that sounds like there's, like, a lazy employee there who, like, does tours <laughs> and then nap, takes fucking naps. After a shift. <laughs> yeah, like, that's... I gotta be honest. If I was, like... If I was working at a place like that as, like, the tour guide and I didn't have a tour scheduled and I had, like, a 30-minute break, I'd, I'd be like... It's nap time. Mm-hmm. There's a bed. There are blankies. Ready to go. Look, I made it spookier. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just coughed into the mic. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I'm making you laugh and cough. But like, no, like, come on, like, you gotta, you you gotta give them something, right? <laughs> like, it's a, it's a way to prep the the space and make it spooky. Oops. There's Oopsie. a butt indent on this bed. <laughs> just one random tour group goes. Why does this bed look like two people slept in it? I have no idea. <laughs> Carol, get your drawers out of the bed. Why is there a thong? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Carol. So, this last one I have is, is a bit of a doozy. It was mm. one of my favorites that I found, though. Okay. So, it is the Patterson Avenue Ghost. Mm. At this spot, 
There is only an empty abandoned lot now, but in the 1880s, it was the site of a big white mansion. Originally, I'm sorry. <laughs> she just gave me a look. <laughs> no, it's it's more of a oh fucking more white people. That's I'm all. Sorry. <laughs> So this big white mansion, oh, God. it was originally used as a funeral parlor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Of course it was. Yeah, of course it oh, was. Why wouldn't it have been? So the basement was used uh, for preparing the bodies while the main floor was the funeral home and the upper floor um, serving as the living space for the mortician and his family. <laughs> Who? That's usually how it works. Who in their fucking, no, no, no. Who in their right mind goes, yeah. This is the business that I want to be in. <laughs> I'm going to move my family into this building. They will be sequestered to the top floor on the middle floor. We will host crying ladies and men. Crying sad family. And then on the bottom floor, we'll just have a basement of dead bodies. Like, I don't know. I think it's a, personally, I think it's a pretty interesting profession to get into. Like, you have a fascination with that sort of thing, and you just want to have to have the, that nice final goodbye for the families. Sure. Well, and a funeral, yes, yes. But morticians uh-huh. who like do the embalming and stuff, yes. those are ripoffs. What do you mean? Oh, we're gonna educate you. To, oh, we're gonna educate all of you today. Okay. All right. So I mean, <clears throat> so the claim is that to have a body. Like a, a corpse, yes. Be safe to be around humans for the funeral. You have to embalm it. Mm. That's one of the theories, or one of the like, the original reasons that they embalmed bodies. Now it's to preserve the body long enough so you can see it, right? Well, not even long enough that you, like you could you could see the body before it was embalmed up to like. I think four or five days, mm. and there will be no like significant changes in because like decomposition does not work that fucking fast, guys. Right. And as long as like you're caring for the body and making sure that it's like not just sitting in a hot fucking sun in sauna, <laughs> like baking, if you take care of a body properly, you do not need to embalm it for a funeral or for really any reason. Mm. All you're doing is pumping fucking preservatives into a corpse and then sewing it up like i'm not gonna pretend that that i know the science behind it but i don't know to me i always saw it as like a form of i'm sorry if this offends anyone but i always saw it as like a form of art well and it it is like the preservation of a body is a form of art yeah however there are ways to do it that do not include unnatural chemicals leaking into our earth mm, yeah, and that is a big, prolonging that the is inevitable. Issue. Yeah, like, like you do not need to prolong the inevitable decay of a body. Sure. But we are mm. with embalming. Like there are, there are natural ways to still have uh-huh. the art of preserving a body for the funeral and for a viewing that is still wholesome and respectful and then lets someone naturally go away. Yeah, I'm wondering if um, different practices are being implemented, because, I mean, we've been doing this for quite a while. Well, there so. So there are. And uh, there's, I'm trying to think of what the name of the podcast is. I think he now has, like, a show, but it's the Adam with the pompadour-type hairstyle. Mm. Hold on, I'm going to Google it. <laughs> <laughs> the phone is here. Adam ruins everything. Oh, yes. 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 yes, yes, yes. So Adam Adam ruined funerals for me. Oh. Or not funerals, but like morgues. Right. Because he, he pretty much like talked about and like provided evidence mm-hmm. that pretty much embalming a body is just to get more money out of the people who are mourning. Oh, no. Yeah. It's literally an industry. It's not oh. anything that's necessary. It's not even legally required. Because, like, there are some funeral homes Mm -hmm. that will lead you to believe with the language that they use that you are legally obligated to, if you are not burning the bodies, (laughs) you will have to embalm. But you Mm. don't. That's not actually real. Just cremate my ass. Yeah, like, like you, you, there are more options than just cremation or embalming. However, these funeral homes only really get paid if you do one of those two things. 
because like a yeah. lot of the bill for a funeral is the the prep of care a body the, the, the care stuff. and prep of a body so like after learning pretty much that it's just a capitalist venture of bullshittery that's upsetting it's incredibly upsetting like after learning that i i no, <laughs> no you you no, want to be a funeral director where you host the actual ceremonies mm-hmm cool as you can tell i have very strong opinions on this yeah i would say but like i think it's bullshit because all you're doing is trying to get money out of people who are already suffering yeah i mean that yeah i've always been on board with i want to be cremated and my my grandma actually like had a badass way of uh disposing of her body when when she died at the hospital and uh, at jefferson she donated it to science so that students could like experiment on her body and like learn about the human body she's <laughs> like yeah fuck it there you go or or <laughs> i want not to be embalmed but i want to be like in a spring loaded casket with confetti <laughs> and i want to be buried just <sighs> in a random location so that when a future archaeologist <laughs> like myself finds my remains it's like a happy surprise <laughs> this is a surprise <laughs> surprise bitch you have a pin you have a note pinned to your chest <laughs> surprise i lived bitch <laughs> like i just that's just all i want is like bury me in a spring loaded coffin with confetti so future archaeologists have a wonderful day on the job that's style <laughs> oh my lord all right so circling back <laughs> We're going back in time to the 1880s. All right. We're in a morgue. <laughs> Someone's so, yeah. fucking with bodies in the basement. Yep. They live upstairs. Funerals in the, in the, on the main floor. Here we go. <laughs> so, yeah. So, they lived on the upper floor. Mm-hmm. Um, eventually, their neighbors began to realize that they hadn't seen the mortician's wife and four children for a while. Oh, fucking A. When asked right. where they were, he simply said they had gone out of state to visit some relatives. Spoiler alert. No, they didn't. Yeah, I know exactly what fucking happened to all five of them. So about two years later, <sighs> the mortician just up and abandoned the home. Uh-uh. Um, sorry, I have to cough again. It's time for my mucinex. And uh, this this mansion sat vacant for for decades. And eventually, families did move in, uh, but they would move out within weeks, sometimes even days. Uh, that one like poor investments. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Probably lost a lot of money. They did. I'm pretty sure this this is pure <coughs> to what ails you. Mm. One Roanoke resident stated that she used to play on the grounds with her siblings and the neighborhood kids, and they always saw a young woman in Victorian era clothing watching them play. Um, she said she was never scared of her, but one day she told her father about it, who knew the house was empty. So he and a neighbor went to check it out and actually saw the woman at the top of the stairs looking out the window. When the police came to investigate, they ended up finding five bodies buried <gasps> under the dirt floor of the basement, suspected to be the missing wife and children. Oh, no. They also found more makeshift graves scattered in the backyard. Shortly after, the house was torn down and the remnants of the stone foundation are still present. So, do you know what that tells me? Hmm. As an archaeologist, there are probably there there not probably there are more dead bodies hmm. there. Yeah. So, um, it reminds me of like H. H. Holmes. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought of. Yeah. On a very smaller scale. On a smaller scale, but at the same <laughs> time, wow. like it's it's um, H. H. Holmes meets Sweeney Todd, but he, in, yeah, he's basically Sweeney Todd. Yeah, he's basically Sweeney Todd, <laughs> but like a funeral home, or oh my gosh, wait. All right, we're doing a throwback. Mm. Pulling up my theater stuff. Mm-hmm. Have you ever heard of a play called Arsenic and Old Lace? Yeah, I saw you. I saw you perform in that. <gasps> oh my gosh, that's right! Mm. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was there. Yeah. So this reminds me of Arsenic and Old Lace. Oh, and the fact that he's probably like not the murderer of his entire family, mm-hmm. but like everybody else. I could see him like being like. Oh, you poor creature. Ooh. Your wife, husband, lover, children, parents have died. Mm. I'm going to kill you too. So <laughs> you can be with them. So you can be with them. It'll I'll, be fine. I'll even put your heart with theirs. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know if that's actually what happened, but like I can yeah. see it happening. I don't, I don't know. I guess, yeah. 
they this wouldn't have known. Like, like, it, like the, the meat would not have been there. One of the first serial killers, maybe. Maybe, but I highly doubt it. Because, wait, yeah. what? H.H. H. Holmes was during one of, like, the World Fair eras. Yes, but H.H. H. Holmes, H.H. H. Holmes was, like, much more, how do I say it? Like, vicious Oh, in his killings. No, yeah, 100%. Whereas, like, this guy just sounds like he was literally pulling an arsenic in old lace. Classic serial killer. <laughs> Classic serial killer, but, like, Jesus, sorry. I'm gonna kill you because I feel bad <laughs> for you. I'm gonna bury you with your loved one. I or bury I'll bury you. parts of you with your loved one. <laughs> it's time for some tea and a hot shower. Make yourself a hot toddy. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, lastly, I just wanted to list off some... Roanoke area ghost walks and houses, um, if they're still around by the time this comes out. <laughs> so <laughs> Who knows, man? There is the Salem Museum and Historical Society's Ghost Walk, um, Rocky Mount Ghost Walk, Murder and Mayhem, a creature from the Carvins Cove Mountain Bike Race, uh, St. Albans Sanatorium Haunted House, or, uh, quote, Mayhem Manor, and the Meeks Manor. Ooh, those sound like fun. Yeah. I mean, we're not too far, so maybe one day we'll venture down there, see what's up. Yeah, we'll, we'll take a road trip. Road trip. Road trip. Though I, I will say, I do want to see Roanoke Island. Mm-hmm. Like, just because, so I've, I've been at Jamestown, and knowing that if you look at Jamestown and then look at most early settlements, mm-hmm. arche- like, architecturally and, and like geographically speaking they're laid out the same so like if you take jamestown and you take it to oh, what's the town in ireland <laughs> uh uh dairy okay you take it to dairy mm-hmm. it's literally the same layout like hmm. the historical town of yeah. like the historical the historical part of dairy mm-hmm. the layout legitimately cords like it, it corresponds exactly to jamestown it's it's literally like printouts of one another because they they were not creative I'm sorry. Like I'm, I'm sorry. They just wanted something that they reminded were, them of home. It was. It was. It was. They repeated the process. Is pretty much what it was yeah. for colonization. Mm-hmm. I would love to see if some of the same things from Jamestown were at least tried to be implemented at Roanoke. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because yes. like it. It. They again. They. They used fucking printout. Like they. They. There was a. There was a formula. They did not stray from it. And yeah. I want to know if that formula had tried to be implemented at Roanoke. That because would be an interesting connection. It would be because what they did in Ireland, they did in Jamestown. Yeah. And they did multiple other areas in America. Which is why if you ever go to like their, like the historical sites at places like Jamestown, you've been to them all because they <laughs> all look the fucking same. <laughs> like I'm, I, I wish I was joking, but I'm not. <laughs> they all look the same. Because that's what it is. They they had a formula. They had a fucking map. They had a setup. It was it just a pretty much. Don't face it. It was yeah that, but it was also <laughs> like their version of cookie cutter houses. Uh, yes. cookie cutter col- like colonial establishments. <laughs> so I would be super curious as to see if there are any still remaining mm-hmm. like structural things that point to colonists were here. Yes. We're going to bring your, your archaeology equipment and your degree, and we're going to take a road trip. It's a trowel yeah. and a hat. <laughs> and a sifter. And I did. I had a sifter whose name was Frankenstein because Aww. the bolts were in wrong, and he had, like, things pointing out of him. He was my favorite. He also was the hardest to use, so I Aww. always got him because nobody else wanted to deal with that shit. Frank, you did you see my big hat? My big uh, Lydia Dietz hat? I did. I saw your... your so, Lauren is giving us, like legit Beetlejuice vibes right here. Oh yes. Uh we had a we had a costume contest at uh at work today and I went as Lydia Dietz from Beetlejuice. I would pull up the musical, but I don't think we have the rights to do that. Mm, I don't know. I don't want to risk it. I don't want to risk it either. But I cut my bangs for this. Not all of them. I was going to say like I don't know how you did that. I got the fang bangs going on right now. That. But also like you you committed. You cut your hair. I did. It's just hair. It'll grow back. And it doesn't look like, like, saying this, you can pull off any fucking hairstyle. I've seen you with multiple <laughs> over the years. I've remembered the rainbow. I remember the fucking 
your child. son. My yeah. The the sun <laughs> scene spikies. here. Yeah, if you know what a scene kid looks like with like the spiky like razor blade hair in the back of their head, that's basically me in high school. It was. Mm-hmm. But you pulled it off. Well, that was a fun time. My hair's too long for that now, but yeah. Um, you could make it. Sh- oh my god! Do you want to make your hair short? Can we make you a scene kid again? Um, you can't cut all of my hair, but I do need a fucking haircut. <laughs> this is too much. It's down to my ass now. Dude, I, mm. I I recently donated more of my hair and I miss it. I like your hair. It's a very nice color right now. Thank you. It's natural. Oh. Yeah. It's a it's, very nice auburn. It's the sun. It makes my hair red. Oh, it's a very nice fall color. <laughs> it is. I am I'm a fall creature. I like sweaters and scarves, and my hair is all burny leaf <sighs> color. Tis the season. Let's hope that November is a far better month for us. You know what? I will cheers to that. Cheers. Well, thank you if you've listened this far. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we uh, I don't want to say we got off track, but we did. Just a bit. But we do constantly, though. We hope you enjoy our tangents. I, I hope so. Um. So with that, I'm going to finish my wine, make some tea, and maybe some soup. I'm going to make sure it's a hot toddy. Yes, and then I'm going to wash all this hairspray and hair gel out of my hair. Well, your hair does look quite deflated at this point. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> sad. Um, If you want to see my actual Lydia Dietz cosplay, you can find my actual instagram i feel comfortable telling you now oh <laughs> what are we we're seven weeks in uh i think so at this point this is episode nine. Oh, there we go nine weeks and so i'm uh at i am nar that's n-a-r-r-r if you care <laughs> i am not going to give my personal okay, instagram out we'll i'm not gonna lie time for that we'll we'll see how much i like y'all <laughs> We'll wait for that one. All right. Though, we did hit a milestone that I want to say thank you for. Oh. 500 downloads. 500 downloads. 500 downloads. That's halfway to 1,000. That is halfway to 1,000. Can you imagine just 500, like, people listening to us 500 times, though? We haven't even gotten to double digits of episodes yet. I know. That's amazing. It is amazing. Thank you. I love you. I love all of you so much. And you know what I would really love, Lauren? Hmm. I would love it. If our dedicated and loyal and wonderful listeners would send in their fucking stories. Yes, I see you out there. I oh, see- shit. Oh, she just dropped everything. <laughs> I see you out there. I'm trying to be smart and just read. <laughs> I know okay. You, I know you have stories, or at least maybe your mom has stories. Yeah, you know what? Where do we send them? We send them to passmethebooze.com backslash submit. Yep. But also, have you ever seen a ghost? Rode shotgun in an alien spaceship. Punched Ted Bundy in the face. We want to hear about it, guys. Please. I don't care how weird it is. Yeah, like, like, if you're, you're, if you're, if you're like Italian mom has a story about how one time she was sitting on the fucking couch in a house that they bought and someone was rocking it and she told them to get the fuck out and all of a sudden the rocking stopped. I want to hear it. That sounds really specific. Lori's got some stories. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll just ask our moms for stories. Oh my and... gosh, wait, can we please interview MJ? <laughs> like, we need to. <laughs> <laughs> like, my mom would be fully on board with it as long as she also gets to teach you how to, like, make homemade pasta. That's I fine. promise you. That's she'll fine. be like, we're cooking. Yes, ma'am. Be like, yeah, come on in. We're setting up secret recording devices, too, to talk to you about your spooky experiences. Well, we make pasta. While we make pasta. Like, I promise you, if you tell my mom she can teach you how to cook something, she will come over and she will tell you any story you want to know. Good. <laughs> we got to get Lori on here. Yeah. But also, I want I want MJ's spooky stories. I feel like MJ's got some spooky stories. I know she's got them. But yeah, send in your stories. Um, Thank you for 500 fucking downloads. Let's Five make our way to 1,000. Download, yes. We're not even in du- double digits of episodes yet. Let's get to 1,000. If we get to 1,000, there'll be a special we'll episode. Do something. Yeah, we'll do something. We'll do something. We'll do something. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone. That's all for now.